Hello and welcome to Lost Love Chronicles. Don't look at me like that, David. It's very common for women in their 40s to take on a younger lover. And almost as common for those women to get divorced, David muttered from the corner chair as he watched his wife, Colleen, get ready to go out on her date. She turned and looked at him briefly before returning her focus to the mirror and applying her eyeliner. You're not going to divorce me, David. I'm not? Please, share with me why I've come to that decision. Because you love me, she said, ignoring David's sarcasm. And despite my plans for this evening, you know that I love you, too. This is nothing more than a diversion from our lives together, and you know it. And you're not willing to throw away our lifetime commitment for something so small. Gee, that's damn considerate of me. Oh, stop it. All the women in my circle have a lover. I'm the last one. All of them? Even stuck-up Joan Bennett has a lover? As a matter of fact, she does. Her second one, actually. Wendell is quite understanding about it, she says. Sure, he is. What does he care what she does? Everyone knows he's been screwing his assistants for years. See? And they're still happily married. Married? Yes. Happily. He was interrupted by the ringing of the doorbell. Damn it. I'm not ready yet. Would you mind getting the door? David looked at her like she was crazy, but she was so intent on her makeup that she didn't notice. As a matter of fact, I would mind, and frankly I'm appalled and insulted that you would even ask your husband to open the door for your boyfriend. With that David turned on his heels and walked down the hallway of their single-level home. He settled into his office and just sat in the dark. Colleen walked toward the front door in her stocking feet and opened the front door for the handsome, 32-year-old man that was to be her escort this evening. Hello, Ryan. I'm sorry, but I'm not quite ready. I'm afraid my husband is being more difficult about this than I anticipated. No problem, Colleen. You're certainly worth waiting for. I'll wait out here. Thank you, Ryan. I'll be as quick as I can. She marched up the hallway to the home office and opened the door, the glare from the hallway light illuminating the office just enough to see her husband sitting in his chair and staring into the darkness. For the record, he's not my boyfriend. I've never in my life called someone a boyfriend until after the third date. Not even you, and I married you. Unfortunately, muttered David, not quite under his breath. You know, I don't appreciate that, David. I've been a good wife to you for over 20 years. I've taken care of your home and cooked for you almost every night. I've been by your side for every social function that your business has required and performed my role as your wife admirably. I think I've earned the freedom to spread my wings a little bit. It's not your wings I'm worried about you spreading. Haha. Uh -huh. We'll talk about this more later. Please try and understand, honey, that this isn't about how much I love you. Colleen closed the office door and then walked back up the hall to finish getting ready. David remained sitting in the dark. No, it's about how much you respect me, he said to the empty space. No one was more surprised than Colleen herself when Ryan started hitting on her. She stopped for coffee every morning at the Starbucks on the first floor of her office building. Well, it was the building where her friend, the aforementioned Joan Bennett, had an office and space occupied by Wendell's company. She and her friends met here most every day to chat and conduct any business related to the charitable foundation they helped run. Mostly to chat. They did it to keep busy and, of course, for the publicity that they and their husband's businesses got from it. Like the other husbands, David owned his own very successful company and made more than enough to take care of them, especially since they never had children. She encountered Ryan on multiple occasions when he stopped as well. He worked in the same building but on a different floor. He was young and energetic, like David used to be. She didn't hold this against her husband. Ryan was 13 years his junior after all. But spending time with Ryan made her feel young and she liked how that felt. They hadn't been on any dates exactly, but they had sat and had coffee together a few times when they happened to be there together and had the time. She was shocked when he started flirting with her and even more shocked when she started flirting back. He apparently took that to mean she was interested and finally suggested they have dinner one night. When Colleen pleaded being married, Ryan brushed that aside. Your ring finger isn't the part of your body I'm interested in. His interest in her sparked, something inside her. She began fantasizing about him and pretending it was him in her bed instead of David. She confided in her friends and was surprised to find out that all four of the other women in her immediate social circle had young lovers. That was the last barrier broken down though her friends weren't aware of her actual intentions. The next time she saw Ryan, she let him know that she'd be open to a date, and they made plans for tonight. Ryan never mentioned her being married, and apparently presumed that Colleen had, or would, handle that on her end. Colleen, for her part, didn't really consider her husband, either. 
She believed he loved her enough to accept this and that he would understand it would have no effect on their marriage. Tonight, Ryan picked her up in a late model Mercedes. She didn't know much about cars, but she knew style when she saw it and certainly recognized the Mercedes emblem. Being married to David had led her to grow accustomed to the finer things in life, and she certainly didn't intend to settle for less from her lover. At the restaurant, she waited patiently while Ryan tipped the valet and then came to escort her into the restaurant. He was very handsome, reminding her of her husband when he was younger. David's hair had grayed a bit and his physique wasn't what it once was, but then her own figure had expanded. All of that was to be expected. I'm delighted you agreed to go out with me, Colleen. You're an incredibly beautiful woman. Thank you, Ryan. I admit your attention is quite flattering. I hope, however, that I haven't given you the wrong impression. I love my husband and have no intention of leaving him, nor should you expect that we'll become intimate tonight. All I expected tonight was an evening out with a beautiful, intelligent, sophisticated woman, and I already have that. The evening went well, which was not unexpected. Their compatibility had been well established during their morning coffee visits. The truth was that the only thing keeping them from tearing up the sheets of Ryan's bed was Colleen's own boundaries. She certainly wanted to have sex with him. After dinner, they went to a local jazz club that had a popular dance floor, and they spent the evening going back and forth between that and their table. While on the dance floor, Ryan was a perfect gentleman, placing one hand in hers and the other in the small of her back. He did not make any effort to pull her especially close nor to make sure she felt his erection. While sitting at the table, Ryan rested his hand on Colleen's thigh, and she made no effort to remove it. As the evening wore on, he became bolder, and his hand ran higher and higher up Colleen's bare thigh. Finally, it got high enough, and Colleen placed her own hand on his to keep it from moving higher, but she did not remove it. They left the club about midnight and got into his car. He didn't start the engine right away, nor did Colleen expect him to. He put his arm around her, and she leaned into him. She had never slept with a guy on the first date, but making out was certainly on the menu, and she and Ryan spent the next ten minutes doing just that. I should be getting home, she said when the clinch was broken. When can I see you again? Ryan asked. I can't meet you every day. Perhaps Sunday? Do you like the ballet? My cousin works at the theater and can get me good tickets on short notice. I've never been, but I would love to go. David isn't really into artsy stuff, but it was a mistake to have you pick me up at home, so I'll meet you. What time should I be there? It's a matinee performance. Let's plan on lunch ahead of time, so let's say 11 a.m. They made arrangements and then drove back to the house Colleen shared with David. She gave Ryan another quick kiss before getting out of the car and stealing herself to face her husband. She imagined him still sulking in his office chair or perhaps waiting in the living room ready for a confrontation. At the extreme, he may have moved his things into the spare room to make some sort of point. In any case, she was ready. What she was not ready for, or at least didn't expect, was that he would be in bed, in their bed, sleeping soundly. She went into the bathroom and removed her makeup and thought about what to do. Did a sound sleep signal some acceptance of the situation? Should she wake him to talk about it? Or should she wait until morning? She was afraid to let it sit for fear that he would leave in the morning before they could talk. At least now he was here. David. He moved, but didn't wake up. David. What? Did you want to talk? No. I want to sleep. I thought, okay, I guess I'll get ready for bed. Colleen went to her closet and selected one of her more sensible nightgowns. Actually, I do have a question. She stepped out of the closet. She wanted David to know that she would always be available to him. Okay. Did you have sex with him? No, David. It was just a date. I've never had sex with a man on the first date. You know that. Yes, but this time you're just auditioning a sex buddy instead of a potential husband so I thought maybe the process had changed. Are you planning to see him again? She hesitated before responding. We're going to the ballet on Sunday afternoon and having lunch beforehand. So, this isn't supposed to affect us, but you're seeing him on Friday night and now Sunday afternoon, during the time we usually spend together. Interesting. David, these are the only times I can see him. She started, but realized he had laid down again and probably wasn't even listening anymore. She returned to her closet and finished dressing for bed. She had genuinely hoped that David would come on board with this, as her friend's husbands apparently had. It was an established fact that as they aged, men's ability to perform waned. One would hope that men would be more understanding of women filling those needs, that they'd want the woman they loved to be happy. It was, as the cliché goes, only sex. Colleen was not at all surprised that David was gone when she woke up the next morning. Based on his reaction, 
she expected that they'd have to go through an adjustment period. She hoped he wouldn't be gone too long today, as she had made her next date with Ryan for Sunday, intending to spend the day with David. But as the morning moved into the afternoon, she realized he was probably avoiding her. Knowing that he often needed to work on Saturdays, it occurred to her that he may have gone into the office, where he could get work done and avoid her. She made up her mind to look for him there, expecting he would not answer any calls to his cell or office phones. She pulled into the parking lot and was not the least bit surprised to see David's car parked in his reserved spot. She signed in at the security desk. She had done this any number of times before and the guards knew her on sight, but she was still expected to follow the rules just like anyone else. She took the elevator up to the seventh floor and made her way to David's office, again, like she had many times before. Hello, David. Colleen. Oscar, let me know you were on your way up. What do you want? To spend time with my husband. Really? Boyfriend busy today? Stop being childish, David. You've never been the only person in my life. I see my friends every day during the week. Unless you're having sex with them, it's not really the same thing. I'm sorry you're having such difficulty with this, David. I've tried to reassure you that nothing I do with anyone else will affect our marriage and how I feel about you. I love you heart and soul and look forward to a long life with you. Then why are you doing this, Colleen? Is intentionally hurting me part of how you express your love for me? In my opinion, you're being incredibly selfish. I could say the same, David. In the grand scheme of things, my relationship with R, with him is of no more consequence to our marriage than my friendship with the ladies, so I don't understand why you are objecting so strenuously. Can't even say his name, Colleen? I don't want to upset you any more than necessary. It seems to me keeping him anonymous would be less harmful. I see. You know, I can't recall the last time you and one of the charity ladies went out on a date. Yet you and John Doe went out last night and are going out again tomorrow. He seems to be of much more consequence than them. As I tried to tell you last night, these are the only times I can get to know him. You know I've never just jumped into bed with someone, even when I was in college. Once we progress past the getting to know you stage. And onto the screwing stage, David interjected. Fine, yes, if you must be vulgar about it. Then I will make sure to handle that discreetly so that you are not aware of exactly when it happens and I will keep it separate from the time we normally spend together. Great. At least you'll be a discreet 304. Anything else? Colleen winced at the name calling, but chose not to protest at the moment. He seemed like he was coming to terms with this, and it was not the time to rock the boat. I had hoped we would spend the day together. Yes, well, as I reminded you last week, and you should know anyway, the quarterly reports are due next week, so I'm always in the office all day on the Saturday before so I can compile the data. I had expected us to spend time together on Friday evening and Sunday as we usually do, but apparently I ceased to be a priority. Oh, David, I'm sorry. I guess in all the, well, with everything going on I just forgot. Whatever. I have work to do, and it doesn't really matter. It does matter, at least to me. Okay, then how about we take off tonight after I finish and drive out to the coast? I can make reservations at Devereaux's, and we can make a day of it tomorrow. Well, the ballet tickets are already paid for. I got a text earlier. I'd feel awfully bad canceling at this point. That's okay, Colleen. I didn't really expect you to say yes. I knew you wouldn't give him up for me. You can leave now. David. But she knew he had already stopped listening. She sighed deeply and left his office. She had really hoped this would go better. She had expected David to be upset at first, but had thought he'd eventually be glad that she was happy and to accept her assurances that she would always be there for him. At least, she would be after this brief time period of getting to know Ryan a little better. Her plan, which she had already communicated to Ryan, was to spend a few dates getting to know him better, in a more personal environment than the coffee shop. She figured five dates would be enough to make sure she was comfortable making love to him. After that, she really only expected to meet him for sex and morning coffee, and she intended to do that only during the day or when David was unavailable. She really didn't want this to interfere with her marriage but she did really want this. As was usual on the Saturday before quarterly reports, David did not come home until nearly midnight. Colleen wondered how he had intended to complete the data collection and still make the trip he suggested, but realized he knew he wouldn't need to. He even said he knew she'd choose Ryan, but it really wouldn't have been right to break a date she had committed to for a plan made up on the spot. Colleen was hoping that David might be feeling amorous this evening. He often enjoyed low-key intimacy when coming home after long days like these. He said it allowed him to wind down and remember why he was working so hard. Sometimes they'd end up having sex. 
She was happy to do it because she loved him so much. She was starting to get tired when she heard the garage door opener. She perked herself up and waited for her husband to walk into the bedroom. She was naked, though covered with the comforter, her bare shoulders seductively visible. How was work, honey? Same as usual, but I got all the data compiled and sorted so the reporting next week should go smoothly. He began undressing while standing in the bedroom, but when it came time to strip down nude, he went into the bathroom, which was a first. But the shower turned on so Colleen was hopeful their routine was going forward. Those hopes took a hit when David emerged wearing his usual shorts. Colleen took this opportunity to lower the comforter and reveal herself. My darling, I thought perhaps we could reconnect tonight. You're sure your boyfriend wouldn't mind? David, comments like that aren't helpful. Can't we just enjoy ourselves tonight as husband and wife, man and woman, and lovers, without concerning ourselves with anyone else? David was clearly conflicted. Despite her choices, he still loved her, and she never failed to arouse him. He believed that she was telling the truth about not having sex with this guy yet. But he recalled the make-out sessions they had starting their first date and assumed she had stayed true to form. He realized about the only hope he had was to give her his all and convince her not to go through with this. Because once she did, once she had sex with him for the first time, he had no intention of touching her again. He dropped his shorts to the floor to the appreciative smile of his wife. Colleen spent the next two hours using her lush body to please her husband and was delighted that he responded in kind with enthusiasm. She hoped that her husband would see that she was more than capable of fully pleasing him while seeking her own, additional satisfaction with Ryan. He was hoping that she would be sufficiently sated so as to abandon her plans to take a lover. They languished in bed the next morning. David was consciously trying to keep her there, hoping that she would be reticent to leave his bed to meet her paramour. He cuddled and nuzzled and kissed her expressing his love for her as best he could. As the time grew later, he could sense her unease and knew his plan was having an effect, and he allowed himself to get a little hopeful. But at ten o'clock, Colleen extracted herself from his embrace. I'm sorry, David. I have to get ready. His plan had failed. She chose her boyfriend over him. Again. Sure. He swung his legs off the bed and pulled his shorts on, making a concerted effort at modesty. It was odd, but the idea of his wife, who had seen him naked thousands of times, seeing him naked as she was going to get ready to meet her lover was particularly offensive to him. He walked out of the bedroom without another look at her. Colleen watched her husband leave the room with feelings of sorrow. She enjoyed cuddling with him this morning, as she always had, and had stayed as long as she could. It was with significant reluctance that she climbed out of bed to shower and get ready to meet Ryan. She certainly couldn't go meet him with the stink of sex with her husband on her. That would be rude and disrespectful, just as coming to her husband after being with Ryan in the future would be. She pondered the situation as the water cascaded over her, trying desperately to think of ways to minimize the hurt that David was feeling. She could think of nothing but ending the idea of taking a lover entirely, and that wasn't an option as far as she was concerned. She put on a modest but alluring dress, with stockings and garter belts and a matching bra and panty set. She had no intention of allowing Ryan to see any of her underthings, but wearing them made her feel sexy. She had to hurry as it was almost time to leave. She called David's name as she walked through the house, hoping to say goodbye and again reassure him of her love for him. But there was no answer. She checked his office and he wasn't there. It was when she looked into the garage and saw their classic 1968 Mustang convertible gone that she realized he had left without another word. She sighed deeply once again, then locked up the house and drove to the restaurant. She was so intent on meeting Ryan that she never noticed the nondescript sedan that took up behind her as she left their neighborhood. Ryan was waiting for her outside, and she apologized for arriving a few minutes late. He gave her a kiss on the cheek and assured her it was no problem. They were seated quickly and all thoughts of David were lost with her being in the presence of this young and handsome man. The lunch conversation was plentiful and she enjoyed herself immensely, as she always had with Ryan. The food was excellent, and she allowed just one thought of her husband to creep in, as she wondered if it would be inappropriate to suggest they dine here sometime in the future as they had never been. The ballet was beautiful and was surprised at David's knowledge of the art. He explained the story to her and how certain movements had certain meanings. He was so different from David in so many ways, and she was aware of all of the experiences she'd not had as a result. It wasn't intended as a criticism of David. After all, no one can be into everything but it made her aware of how much they complimented each other. She figured that most anything she wanted to try would appeal to at least one of them. If she could somehow get David on board with this, Ryan might even be more than just a physical dalliance. 
After the ballet, they took a short drive up into the local hill country. David took them to a small overlook that provided a magnificent view of the city skyline. Colleen imagined she was not the first woman that he had brought up here, but she knew he had a history so took no offense. She also knew precisely why he had brought her up here. You're such a beautiful woman, Colleen. I feel lucky that you're here with me. Then I guess we're both lucky, Ryan. The making out began in earnest. The lust she felt for this virile young man was making her head swim, and she wondered if she'd be able to hold out until the fifth date. She pulled him closer, and the kissing intensified. She knew that if she took even one step, she probably wouldn't be able to bring herself to stop until she went all the way. So again, she reluctantly pulled away. Ryan was noticeably disappointed. I'm sorry, Ryan. I want to. I really do. But I've told you that I have certain boundaries. I know, Colleen. I understand that you want to be comfortable for us to go farther, and you've set a number of dates. I feel like all the times we met for coffee should give me some kind of credit toward that. I hadn't considered that. We did spend an awful lot of time getting to know each other before our first official date. Perhaps I'm being unnecessarily rigid about this. Really, it was just the excuse she had been looking for to move her timetable up. When can you arrange a long lunch? She asked, her meaning clear. Mondays are far too busy, but Tuesday can easily be arranged. I must have time to clean up before I go home, so please plan accordingly. I'll bring the necessary supplies. I'll let you know the details tomorrow morning at Starbucks. Ryan started the car and drove back to the restaurant parking lot where Colleen's car had been left. It was nearly 6.30 p.m. when she finally pulled into her driveway. She was practically floating on air as she walked into the empty house. She quickly checked her phone for a message from David, and there was none. She moved quickly into her bedroom, keeping an ear out for the garage door opener. She changed into her evening lounge where when she heard the garage door opener indicating David was home, she went immediately to the kitchen and prepared to start dinner. She had become quite good at preparing good meals quickly since David's schedule was so erratic. She was already pulling things from the refrigerator when David came in from the garage. Hi, honey. Have a good drive? It was fine. She went to kiss him, and he deflected it to his cheek, obviously still upset that she had left his bed this morning to meet Ryan. At least he was still speaking to her, even if it was with short sentences. She'd held out hope that last night's lovemaking would make a difference, but it appears leaving his bed had drained all of the goodwill. She noticed he didn't ask about her day. Dinner will be about 20 minutes. That's fine. I'll be in the office. Colleen put together a quick teriyaki stir-fry with rice and called David to dinner. He washed his hands and then joined her at the table. She tried making conversation. Where'd you drive today? Nowhere in particular. I just got on the highway and drove. Did you stop anywhere? There was a small deli just off the freeway where I had lunch, and I got out a few times to stretch my legs. That's about it. Colleen tried to talk about her day, but David put a quick stop to that. The ballet. I have no interest in your date, Colleen. This isn't about that. I was just. Not another damn word about it. I just want it. With that, David got up, leaving his meal half eaten. He walked down the hall and went into his office without another word. Colleen sat for several minutes, then got up to clear the table. I guess that was a bad idea, she thought. She packaged up the leftovers so David could take them to work for lunch if he wished. He had always complimented her cooking. She spent the evening straightening the house, hoping that David would at some point emerge from his office and they could spend time together. She also hoped to somehow make the evening a little less disastrous than it had turned out to be. She had only intended to tell him about the beauty of the ballet and see if possibly it would be something he might like to experience in the future. It had nothing to do with Ryan directly, but apparently David was unable to separate the two. She went to her bedroom and prepared for bed, then climbed under the covers and began reading her book. She continued to hope that David would join her, but as midnight approached she assumed he was hoping she would fall asleep before he went to bed. She didn't intend to make it that easy for him. She walked down the hall to his office. Are you coming to bed? Eventually. I have some things I want to finish. Please, David. Come to bed and lay beside me. Make love to me if you want, or cuddle with me if that's all you want, or even just lay there quietly. But please don't avoid me. I just told you, Colleen, that I have things to finish. If your guilty conscience is interpreting that as my avoiding you, there's nothing I can do about it. The sooner I finish, then the sooner I can get in bed. So if you'll excuse me. Colleen reluctantly closed the door and returned to bed. She had lost her interest in reading and again slid in between the covers. Was it possible she was subconsciously feeling guilty and interpreting his actions through that lens? She dismissed that idea quickly, however. 
She knew in her mind and heart that she was doing nothing wrong. Her love for her husband was completely intact. No, whatever the issue was, it certainly wasn't that. She still believed David was purposely avoiding her, but not wanting to exacerbate the issue any further, she clicked off the light and closed her eyes. Sleep came quickly. She awoke the next morning alone in bed, and a search of the house found that David had already left for work. She had no idea whether he had ever come to their bed last night. Frankly, she was growing tired of his attitude. She had done her very best to assure him nothing in their marriage would change, but he was intent on being hurt and allowing those feelings to rule the day. Well, no more. She would proceed with her plans with Ryan and continue to be David's loving wife, but she was going to stop begging him to be her husband. She dressed as usual and went to meet her friends as normal, with her regular stop at Starbucks on the agenda as well. She wasn't surprised to see Ryan sitting at a table in the corner, and their eyes met almost immediately. She purchased her coffee then joined him. They resisted any public displays of affection. I couldn't stop thinking about you last night, Colleen. Likewise, Ryan. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. He passed a small note to her. Here's the information for tomorrow. My condo is some distance from here, but I still thought that would be preferable to a hotel, if that's all right with you. More privacy that way, and no risk of someone seeing us checking in. Thank you for your discretion, Ryan. I have no desire to hurt my husband any further than he already is. Of course. They chatted a bit more before Ryan needed to excuse himself to a busy day at work, and Colleen headed up to meet with Joan, Marge, Ellen, and Gail. Despite her awareness that each of her friends had young lovers, she hadn't told them of her actual plans to take one herself and had no intention of doing so for fear of it becoming public and somehow hurting David. No, this was something to be kept private. That night, she was delighted that David greeted her with some enthusiasm and joined her for dinner. The conversation flowed well, the topic of her lover steered clear by both of them. Colleen found it to be extremely satisfying and hoped that it meant David was beginning to understand that her being with Ryan would have absolutely no effect on them. She didn't see it for the attempt to dissuade her from taking a lover at all that it actually was. It was with significant anticipation that Colleen arrived at the doorstep of Ryan's condo. He opened the door before she could even knock and pulled her inside. The door was barely closed before Ryan had his arms around her and his lips finding hers. She responded with equal enthusiasm. They were both so eager to finally experience the other that foreplay was entirely unnecessary, so they skipped it. Within just a couple minutes of walking through his door, Colleen was on her back being having sex with a man other than her husband for the first time in 25 years. And she was begging him to do it harder. In fact, it seemed almost like the entire experience was one long, extended climax. They relaxed in each other's arms on Ryan's bed. That was amazing, Ryan. Better than your husband? Colleen sat up and looked her lover in the eye. My husband is strictly off limits, Ryan. He is a wonderful lover, and I'm not here because of any shortcomings on his part. If you're going to try and turn this into some macho, dick measuring contest, then I'm going to leave now, and it'll be the last time this happens. Am I clear? Of course. I meant nothing by it. I was only concerned about your satisfaction. She settled back into his arms. It was very good. I enjoy being with you immensely and look forward to more. They spent the next two plus hours coupling in a more loving manner than their initial, hormone driven sex session. Colleen appreciated that Ryan was very capable of both and was responsive to her direction on what she wanted and how she wanted it. That was no different than David, and yet it was. Ryan, for his part, enjoyed Colleen's plentiful flesh. He had long enjoyed women who were older and a little on the plump side, and Colleen fit the bill nicely. He could see them enjoying a long, mutually beneficial relationship. She had no interest in leaving her husband, and he had no interest in marrying at all. He had tried living with girlfriends in the past, and it usually led to the end of things. He simply couldn't abide having someone in his space all the time. Yes, an older, married woman was perfect. A glance at the clock revealed that they had been at it for nearly three hours, so Colleen excused herself to the shower to get cleaned up. She had purchased the same soap and shampoo she had at home, as well as some feminine hygiene items so she could clean things up. She would just leave these things at Ryan's condo so they'd be available as needed. Finally, with one last, long, deep kiss they said their goodbyes and Colleen made the drive back to her home while Ryan returned to work. Colleen managed to calm herself as she waited for her husband to come home. She must have checked herself in the mirror a hundred times to make sure nothing was out of place. If David didn't know when, or even if, she was meeting Ryan, it would go a long way towards smoothing things over. 
David walked through the door at 7.13 p.m., and Colleen greeted him warmly, wrapping her arms around him and kissing him on the cheek. David seemed to respond at first, but then his arms dropped and she could feel his body slump. She pulled away, concern on her face. David, you had sex with him today, didn't you? What? David, I don't. What makes you say that? You're a creature of habit, Colleen, and I know those habits better than anyone. Back when we were younger and more active, a shower in the middle of the day wouldn't have been unusual. But that hasn't happened in the last few years unless it was for a particular reason, until today. I haven't. The smell of your soap and shampoo, David continued, hasn't been this strong at this time of day in years. All things considered, the only explanation is that you took a shower recently with the goal of washing off or covering up, whatever it was after being with him. Granted, that's better than smelling the other, so I actually appreciate that. But all you did was telegraph exactly what you were trying to hide. Excuse me. He pushed past her and went into the office. Damn it, she was sure that would work. She hadn't even considered the strength of the scent giving her away. She had hoped to do this without David knowing anything more than that it was simply going on sometime and somewhere. But she would have to rethink that now. Sigh. She managed to get herself together enough to start dinner. She kept it simple, making some broiled chicken breast with carrots and linguine noodles. She plated the food and set the table, then anxiously walked to the office. David, dinner's ready. I'm not hungry. Honey, you need to eat. I'm fine. Thank you. David, please, you have to take care of yourself, and I doubt you had anything healthy all day. I was trying to be polite about this, but I can see that's not going to work. Colleen, I have no interest in eating anything you cooked. I'll get myself something later. Now, if there's nothing else. Suddenly not hungry either. Colleen packed up the food as leftovers and stowed them in the refrigerator. She could always pass them on to some of the people in Joan's office if David continued to ignore them. Even though they were wealthy, she had grown up struggling and hated the idea of wasting food. Colleen spent the evening trying to come up with ways to see Ryan and still manage to keep it hidden, for lack of a better term, from David. Even if he knew that it was happening, it was imperative that he not know when it was happening. Oddly, the one thing she never considered was simply not doing it at all. She again went to bed alone, finding falling asleep easier than expected, which she attributed to the complete satisfaction she got with Ryan earlier in the day. Even the stress of David realizing it had happened didn't prevent sleep from coming. She awoke about 4 a.m. and David was not in bed. She was not surprised by that but was surprised to find him sleeping with his head on his desk. She shook him awake. David, David, honey. I know you're upset, but you can't sleep like this. Come to bed, or go to the spare room if you don't want to be next to me. This is terrible for your back. I know you're angry with me, but that doesn't change that I love you and will try to take care of you. Please. David stirred awake, wiping the drool from his arm and mouth. He was disoriented, as often happens when one first awakens, and wasn't entirely sure that the events of earlier this evening weren't a nightmare. So he allowed himself to be led down the hall to their bedroom. She began undressing him, and suddenly he remembered that it was all true, and he interpreted her removing his clothes as an attempt to seduce him, and he started to put up resistance. Stop, Colleen, stop. David, I'm just trying to you ready for bed. Please, stop. Just another couple of buttons. Damn it, Colleen, get your filthy hands off of me. Colleen shrunk away. This wasn't the first time David had raised his voice, but she could probably count the number of times it had happened in the last 25 years on one hand. She sat at her vanity, struggling to hold back her tears and being mostly unsuccessful. I'm sorry I raised my voice, Colleen, but you wouldn't stop. I just, I was just trying to get you undressed for bed. I wasn't trying to do anything. I know. I just, I didn't like you touching me with hands that had been on another man's dick less than 24 hours ago. David. That's, okay, I guess I understand, but I really don't. I mean I've showered since then and washed my hands several times, but I understand that it's more in your mind than anything. I'm sorry, David. I'll leave you to it. Colleen busied herself in other rooms of the house to allow David time to get himself into bed. Despite David's reaction, she really believed it was just a matter of waiting and eventually David would come to terms with this. So even as things seemed to be falling down around her, she never considered ending her relationship with Ryan. If anything, she considered it a test of her strength and resolve, and she was determined not to give up. After several minutes, she peeked into the bedroom and saw David was fast asleep. She returned to bed and slept well. The next day was Wednesday, and David worked late, or so he said, 
but at least he had the courtesy to let her know, even if it was via text instead of his usual phone call. She realized there was nothing she could do to help him work through this, at least, nothing more than she has already done. She now knew what she needed to say the next time they spoke. Thursday morning had her buzzing with anticipation as she and Ryan had plans to meet again. They had met at Starbucks yesterday morning and discussed how often and on what days they would meet. Mondays were out because of Ryan's busy schedule, and Colleen was unwilling to do Fridays or weekends because she didn't want to infringe on any time David might want to spend with her. That left Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. They also didn't want to do it too many times, nor too close together, so they decided, for now, on Tuesdays and Thursdays at Ryan's condo. The meeting with her friends seemed like it was taking forever, and when it finally ended she practically sprinted from the building. She had to make an effort to obey the speed limit to make sure she didn't get pulled over. She once read or heard that cheating sex was the best sex. She wasn't sure if it was that or the thrill of a new partner after so many years. She walked into Ryan's condo, the door having been unlocked as promised. Ryan was waiting on the bed and, just like last time foreplay was not needed, she climbed on and in another spirited session lasting about three hours followed. It was fortunate that Ryan's schedule was flexible enough to allow them this time. While she would never admit it, she believed Ryan to be a better lover than David, though this wasn't entirely a surprise. David was a faithful and dedicated husband, and he had geared his lovemaking toward making her happy. Ryan, on the other hand, had been with many women and had the opportunity to learn different skills, and he brought that to bed with Colleen. Eventually, it was time to leave and go back home. She checked her phone and found no messages so assumed David would be home around his usual time. As she dressed and then drove home, she considered what she intended to say to him tonight. She showered and cleansed herself thoroughly. She now knew this would be a tip-off to David, but she had a plan for that as well. She dressed in her usual loungewear and waited for David to arrive home. He walked in the door just before 7 p.m. Good evening, honey. Colleen, will you be eating my cooking tonight, or should I just be concerned with myself? I'm fine. I grabbed something on the way home. You know you shouldn't eat fast food. It's so bad for you. Yeah, well, I'll be in the office. David, when you have a few minutes, there's something I'd like to talk to you about. Okay. He continued down the hall and closed himself into his office. Colleen busied herself with some research for the upcoming fundraiser they were planning, but as the evening wore on, it became evident that David had no plans to initiate the conversation she had requested. She closed down her laptop and walked to the office. David, can we talk now? I suppose, he sighed. Colleen took a seat in the spare chair in the office. Honey, despite what you may believe right now, I love you very much. I don't consider my new relationship to be of any consequence to our marriage, but I understand that you do. This is something that I believe I need, but it's also something that I want. I had hoped you would be more open and understanding, but it wasn't to be. What I want to say, David, is that I can be as patient as I need to be to allow you time to process this. I will still be here every evening and every weekend. I hope that we will spend time together and that we will make love as we always have. But if you prefer to spend the time ignoring me, well, then I guess I'll have to accept that. But I'll still be here and hoping we can find a way past this. So you plan to keep screwing Ryan? Yes, I. Wait. Did you think it would be so hard for me to find out his name, Colleen? No. I guess I just thought you'd prefer not to know it. Also, David, I want to apologize for the situation on Tuesday where my midday shower made clear that I had been intimate with Ryan that day. The last thing I want to do is make you aware of when I'm meeting him, so I'm going to start showering every weekday afternoon. I assure you I am not meeting him that often, but that way I will always be in roughly the same condition every day when you get home from work. I realize that's not perfect, but it's the only thing I can come up with right now. And this is your final decision on this matter, Colleen? There's nothing I can do or say to convince you to end your relationship with Ryan. I'm sorry, David. But no, there isn't. Well, I do appreciate your honesty, even if it isn't what I wanted to hear. I guess I just have to learn how to deal with it, then. Is that all you wanted to say? Just that I love you, honey. I truly, truly do. And I hope that you can separate the love I feel for you from the physical need I have that Ryan fulfills. David smiled wryly and nodded his head ruefully. Colleen waited several more seconds to see if there was anything else her husband wanted to say, then left quietly, closing the door gently behind her when it became apparent there wasn't. She had been very anxious going into the conversation and wondered if she'd really be able to get through it, and was proud that she had managed, and that it had gone so well. She just knew David would be able to see her point of view, 
especially when he realized just how important it was to her and how little it actually affected their lives together. True to her word, Colleen spent Friday evening and the entire weekend at home, with the exception of a few errands that needed to be run but none of those took longer than an hour. She invited her husband to go with her, hoping his fears that this was an excuse to meet Ryan would be allayed, but he declined. They spoke as needed and she didn't sense any hostility from David, but no love or affection from him either. She allowed that he was trying to find a new normal and that would take time. She tried to initiate lovemaking on Saturday night, but David deflected all attempts, giving no reason, but Colleen knew what the reason was. She was not deterred, however, as she continued to believe it was all just a matter of time. There would be some rough spots ahead, but soon David would see that everything would be okay. Monday morning came and David was gone early. Colleen suspected this would go on for a while, but that things would go back to normal. Showering in the middle of the day might prove to be inconvenient, but it was a small price to pay to soothe David's feelings. She met with her friends and listened to them talk about their exploits over the weekend with their young men. She had enjoyed these stories over the years, and as her friends were talking she was reliving her time with Ryan in her mind. She could practically feel his presence, and she felt her heat rise. Gail noticed. Are you alright, Colleen? You're getting a little red in the face. I'm fine. I'm fine. Just a little warm, is all. She took a sip of her water, and the moment seemed to pass. She tried to focus on the stories again, but couldn't seem to keep Ryan out of her mind. Concerned about giving herself away, she instead forced herself to think about other things, and was pretty much successful. After a Monday night with David that was the same as the weekend, Colleen prepared for her Tuesday with Ryan. Ryan met her wearing a robe that quickly found its way to the floor and soon pounced on her. He had given her no choice and no warning, and she reveled in the feeling of being taken. They finally took a break about 90 minutes later. They were now relaxing in each other's arms. I know your husband is off limits, Colleen, but I feel I should ask how things are going at home. Do you feel as if you're in any danger? Thank you for your concern, Ryan, but David isn't like that at all. He's having some trouble adjusting, so things have been a little cold and distant lately. He seems to be avoiding me, though denies it. So you're still talking? Perhaps that's a good sign. In short phrases and only as necessary. I've assured him I love him and made sure I was there for him. It's just going to take time for him to realize that you're no threat to our marriage. They spent another hour in more tender lovemaking before Colleen took her leave. She both bathed and showered to ensure all of her was clean and then sat down to read her book while she waited for David to come home, or to send a message that he wasn't. He stepped through the door at 7.36 p.m. Hi, honey. How was work? It was fine. Would you like dinner tonight? I had a late lunch. I'm fine. Is there anything you'd like to talk about? No. I'll be in the office. Okay. I'll be here if you need me, or want me, she added coquettishly. Duly noted. The door closed softly and Colleen again found herself alone in the living room. She wondered how much of his time in the office was spent actually working and how much time was spent simply avoiding her. Nevertheless, she was determined to stick to her plan to allow him his space and time to see how little this would affect them, so she sat and took up her book again, confident she was doing the right thing. And so it went for the next several weeks. Colleen continued to meet Ryan every Tuesday and Thursday, and the sex continued to be amazing and intense. Evenings and weekends with David continued in the same vein. They were civil to each other, speaking to each other as needed. Colleen offered dinner every night and every night David declined using one reason or another. David spent most every evening in his office and Colleen spent her time reading, working on her responsibilities for the charity, watching TV, or browsing the internet. While there were times when the loneliness seemed ready to overwhelm her, she clung to her belief that she could have both a loving, engaged husband and a dynamic, attentive lover. This belief gave her the strength to fight through the lonely moments. It went on for three months before Colleen finally noticed a change in her husband. While his schedule hadn't changed, he was actually coming home in a good mood, even if it was a little later than usual on many nights. They began having dinner together a couple nights a week and sometimes spent time together watching an interesting program on TV or just sitting and reading. While they had not yet resumed their lovemaking, Colleen was certain this change in behavior signified a change in attitude on the part of her husband, so that was only a matter of time. However, another three months passed, and they seemed no closer to resuming physical intimacy. It was almost like their relationship had reached the status of roommates, maybe friends, but then stopped progressing. And while she was glad things had progressed as far as they had, she was anxious for them to go even further. 
As marvelous as the sex was with Ryan, she didn't love him, and she craved the lovemaking she experienced with David. I mean, with Ryan it was just sex, but with David it was truly love, and she did miss it. She decided to address it directly that evening. David, I want you to know how much I appreciate your understanding regarding my relationship with Ryan. I know it hasn't been easy on you. Well, you left me little choice, Colleen. I know, and I'm sorry it came to that. But I'm still concerned about our lack of, well, any kind of sex life. You and I haven't made love since I first started seeing Ryan, and I miss it. I'm happy with how far things have come so far, but I'm wondering when we might take the next step. I suppose I haven't expressly told you this, Colleen, but I really have no intention of having sex with you. David, that's ridiculous. I always make sure I'm very clean for you. There's no reason at all for us to not have sex. I know you see it that way, but I don't. You made a choice and forced it on me. Don't forget, I too can make a choice and force it on you. With that final statement, David got up and went to get ready for bed. Colleen considered this turn of events. She hadn't expected David to simply cut them off. Actually, when they made love those two times when she first started seeing Ryan, she thought perhaps her having a lover would spur David on, give him something to compete against. That wasn't why she was doing this, but considered that it may be the proverbial icing on the cake. The prospect of not making love to David when she had a lover was not a possibility she had even considered. But he couldn't hold out forever. She just had to have faith in her plan, and she was sure it would all work out. Colleen decided to ramp up the pressure a little bit, but indirectly. Thus far, she had been keeping a respectful distance and giving David a chance to come to terms with things, but that was based on her belief that he would eventually resume their own sex life. With his announcement that he planned to withhold his affection as long as Ryan was in the picture, her plans changed. She would turn up the tease factor. She would become more physical with him, like rubbing her body up against him. She would wear skimpio clothing to bed, or maybe none at all. She had never been a nude sleeper, but that was about to change. Yes, she was going to make it very difficult for him to resist her, and as soon as he gave in once, there would be no reason for him to turn her down any longer. This plan couldn't fail, except that it did. Over the next two months, Colleen did everything she could think of to entice her husband to sample her wares, and not only didn't he go for it, he didn't seem to be even close. Nothing worked. By the time she abandoned this part of her plan, it had been eight months since they last made love. Her physical needs were certainly being taken care of by Ryan, but she was definitely missing the emotional needs that making love to David fulfilled and was becoming very frustrated. She maintained the status quo for another month and then finally decided to just make the most of whatever it was that David would offer. If he didn't want to have sex with her because of her relationship with Ryan, then that was his loss. If he wanted a sexless relationship, then that is what they would have. She would express her love for him in other ways and take from him whatever he gave. It was that fateful decision that started them down their final path. It was a warm Wednesday morning as Colleen parked her Lexus outside her husband's building. She picked up her purse, signed in at the guard's desk, and again made her way up to the seventh floor. It had been some time since she had been here during the day, and she had forgotten how the office bustled. Terry, David's longtime receptionist, caught sight of her as soon as she stepped off the elevator. Mrs. Lynch. It's so good to see you again. It's been some time since you've come to see us. Hello, Terry. It's good to see you as well. Is he in his office? She asked, already starting to walk that way. Oh, yes ma'am, but can I ask you to hold on? They're working with confidential documents this morning, so I'm to announce anyone that's here. Of course. Terry picked up the phone and dialed David's extension. Mr. Lynch, your wife is here to see you. Colleen couldn't make out the response though could hear her husband's voice coming through the handset. The brief conversation ended. It'll just be a couple minutes, Mrs. Lynch. He needs to secure some documents. Colleen nodded her understanding. While she waited, she looked around the office. She saw a couple familiar faces and a couple of new faces. She noticed that Eileen's desk was empty. Eileen was David's longtime personal assistant, and Colleen assumed she was in the office with David. After a couple of minutes, David's door opened and a beautiful woman came walking out. She was shorter than Colleen, maybe 5 feet 2 inches or 5 feet 3 inches, with long, dark brown hair and a chest that threatened to burst open the buttons on her blouse. She was probably in her late 20s or early 30s. Colleen hated her immediately. Mrs. Lynch, it's so nice to finally meet you. My name is Alana. Come on back. Colleen followed her as if she didn't know where she was going, assuming this was the protocol now. 
It didn't occur to her that she had made this walk with Eileen many times, though it had been a while, but Eileen was older and had been married forever and they would chat amiably as they walked. This was different. Finally, they arrived at David's office. Alana lingered in the doorway as Colleen walked all the way in. Thank you, Alana. Go ahead and take lunch now. We'll pick this up again at two o'clock. Yes, sir. Alan responded crisply, then left the office while shutting the door behind her. How on earth does she manage to avoid tipping over with those things? I assume you didn't come here just to say catty things about my assistant. Your assistant? What happened to Eileen? She got promoted. She was the personal assistant to the owner and CEO. Where could she have gotten promoted to? Executive assistant to the owner and CEO. The job was starting to get a little big for her, actually. She just turned 60 and needed to slow down a bit. So I created a new position that would give her less responsibility and end her travel. So that other girl will be traveling with you. Yes, and I find your obvious jealousy amusing and ironic, all things considered. Why are you here, Colleen? To take my husband to lunch. I see. And on a Wednesday, I notice. Yes, though I'm not sure what that has to do with anything. You haven't shown up here during the week in probably a year. Why now? Because I miss my husband, David. Because I want to spend time with him, with you. I love you, whether you believe that or not. And I wanted to see you. All right, Colleen. They just opened a new Vietnamese place down the street that's quite good. Let's go to lunch. They walked in mostly silence, with only a few random comments on things they saw as they were walking. Colleen had her hands wrapped around David's arm, and he didn't seem to mind. They were seated quickly and the hostess greeted David by name. Colleen assumed he was a frequent visitor. They talked about nothing in particular. David suggested a couple of dishes that he thought she would like and then they ordered lunch. Colleen reached across the table and took David's hand. She took it as a small victory that he didn't even flinch. Do you believe that I love you, David? Love me? What stuff do you smoke to be in such a delusional world? My kind of love wonders how you could do what you did and still love me, but apparently your kind of love allows for that. However, I'll give you credit for at least picking a halfway decent guy. What do you mean? What could you possibly know about Ryan? I know quite a lot. I made it a point to know. You had him investigated? Of course I did. That's how I know so much about him, and how I know you go to his condo every Tuesday and Thursday like clockwork. And why I noticed you came to see me on a Wednesday so you don't miss your time with him. But like I said, at least he's not a con man or a gold digger. You may choose to be naive about this, but I won't. I have a very valuable company and we earn a lot of money. You may have just wanted a strange dick, but... Can you keep your voice down, please? Sorry, didn't mean to air your dirty laundry. Anyway, I had to consider that his intentions may have been less than... Well, honorable doesn't seem like the right word, since he's screwing a married woman. But my point is that he seems to be in it just for the sex and has no plans to blackmail you or me. Of course not. He would never do something like that. Famous last words, Colleen. But in this case, you happen to be right. David, let's change the subject. I came here to spend time with you and talk about us. What us, Colleen? We're more roommates and friends than husband and wife. We haven't made love in nearly a year. Your choice, Colleen interjected, into which David responded with a smirk. Yes, my choice. It has nothing to do with your choice to cheat on me. David. So, no sex and what time we do spend together is just watching TV or being in the same room together. That's why I'm here today. I'm not happy with where things are, and I'd like to change them. Now before you ask, I have no intention of giving up my time with Ryan, but I want to try and make the time you, and I spend together the most it can be. That's what you don't seem to understand, Colleen. As long as you're seeing Ryan, it is the most that it can be. I don't accept that, David. There's no reason our marriage can't be exactly the same as it was. My time with Ryan doesn't intrude on my time with you. I don't love him, so my feelings aren't being shared with anyone. All it would take would be for you to think of my time with Ryan as no different from my time with my friends. It's just me having another interest. But it is different. I don't object to your time with your friends because no one should have their life revolve around a single person. But I won't carry on our marriage as if nothing is happening while you screw another man. Besides your claim that everything is the same is absurd. Earlier there were two people in our marriage, now there are three. So, no it is not the same, and it will never be the same. Your claim that you don't love him is even more disgusting. You use him only for sex. What does that make your lover boy, a toy? By the end of his rant, David's volume had risen steadily and Colleen's efforts to get him to be quiet were fruitless. When he was done speaking, he pulled out his wallet, dropped a $50 bill on the table and stormed out the door. 
Colleen quickly grabbed her things, whispered some apologies to those around her without noticing the looks of distaste they were giving her, and quickly left the restaurant herself. She looked in the direction of David's office and saw him walking some distance away and with a full head of steam. She knew she would never catch him, so she just took her time and walked back to her car. She struggled to keep herself together long enough to get into her car, but as soon as the door was closed, she broke down crying. She simply couldn't understand this. There was no reason at all for her relationship with Ryan to have any effect whatsoever on her marriage. Joan and the other ladies all had lovers and were still happily married. Why on earth was she having such difficulty? She wondered if she should talk with her friends about it, but ultimately decided to put that idea off, at least for now. She wouldn't want them to think she had botched something they had managed so seamlessly. She went home and took her now customary afternoon shower. She didn't want David to think she had sought solace with Ryan after their fight, so she needed to stick with her established pattern. She had hoped to continue the conversation more civilly after her husband had calmed down, so she took some time to make herself presentable. The reality was that this situation would have to be dealt with. They couldn't just keep on the way they had been. David came home late, at nearly 9 p.m. He'd had the courtesy of letting Colleen know he would be late tonight, so she fixed herself something for dinner and did some light cleaning around the house. That was mostly to keep herself busy while she waited for her husband to arrive. David, can we talk, please? I don't know what else there is to say, Colleen. You've started and maintained an extramarital affair despite my objections, continuing for nearly a year. You seem to think the problem is my objection to it, rather than that you're doing it. We're not going to agree, so what's the point in having another conversation? Yes, okay. I understand all of that. But I still think that you, and I could be more than we are. We've been together for 25 years. Surely we can be more than what we've become. We become what we are because of your affair, Colleen. That makes no sense, David. Joan, Ellen, Gail, and Marge all have happy, loving marriages with lovers on the side to spend time with when their husbands aren't available. I fail to see why we can't accomplish the same thing. David laughed silently, then gestured for his wife to take a seat. You know, I spoke to their husbands when all of this started. Well, except Wendell. His flings are common knowledge, and everyone knows he was cheating on Joan long before she would have done the same. But I did speak with the others. What about? At first, I was willing to see if you would get this out of your system. I let you go on your dates and even meet with Ryan for your afternoon sex fest a couple times. But after the second time you told me in no uncertain terms that you intended to continue seeing him for the foreseeable future. At that point, I decided to seek some advice from the happy husbands to see how they dealt with it. If they were, somehow, able to accept what their wives were doing, perhaps they could give me a few pointers. Oh David, how sweet of you. Did they have any advice? They did, and I've put many of them into effect. This confused Colleen, as she hadn't noticed anything that David had done to keep their marriage stronger. Such as, did you know that of those four couples that you're trying so hard to emulate? Only Rick and Gail continued having sex together once the wife took her lover? What? You see, Joan actually started it by taking a lover in response to Wendell doing the same. When Wendell found out he stopped being with her at all, not that it affected him much. I don't believe it. Joan is always saying how happy they are. She's saving face, Colleen. They spend hardly any time together. It's usually only for public functions where it's necessary to appear as the happy couple. From what I was told, they have separate bedrooms and barely speak. They use texts and emails to communicate. That, that can't be right. Marge was the next one that got sucked in. She and Norm apparently didn't have much of a marriage as it was. Nothing bad, but they just were indifferent. When Marge heard about Joan having a lover, she decided to do the same thing. Their marriage didn't improve, but they are still married and I guess Marge is happier. But Marge has always gushed about their marriage. Probably the same thing as Joan. She wanted everyone to think everything was great. There are few things as important to older, wealthy women than image, Colleen. But they're my friends. They'd be honest with me. David just smiled at this. Gail was next, and Rick says he honestly tried to put it out of his mind and continue on as things were. But he says after a couple of months she was clearly bored being with him. Plain old married couple sex wasn't exciting enough for her anymore. Now that she had exciting, afternoon, cheating sex with a new and younger man. They haven't done it since. I'm having trouble believing this. I just can't believe that my friends would lie to me about their marriages like this. I'm sure the husbands are just trying to make the wives look bad. And I doubt that the husbands are going without sex. I mean, except for Wendell. Oh, they're not going without. They have a simple solution for handling those needs. Oh, 
And just what is that? They hired personal assistants. The reality of that statement took a moment for Colleen to process, and when she finally realized what it meant. That new girl you hired? David was unfazed by Colleen's outburst, and in fact had been expecting it. I hired Alana shortly after you gave me that speech. I was telling the truth about Eileen needing some help and creating another position. And actually, I hired Alana based on her business qualifications. She has a business degree and came highly recommended. For her work on her back, no doubt. For the first couple of months, everything was very professional between us, remarked David, ignoring his wife's jab. Her job necessitates that we spend a lot of time together, and we got to know each other very well. After a couple of months, I opened up to her about what you were doing. It was such a relief to unburden myself. I felt like a weight had been lifted. That must have been about the time I noticed your mood improve. And to think I thought you were coming around. After that, no topic was off limits. We shared just about everything there was to share about ourselves. We've become very close. When did you start doing her? Just a couple of months ago, actually. Unlike you, I'm not a jump in bed with some guy I met in a coffee shop kind of person. Colleen winced noticeably at the insult. David continued. Things had been building for some time. We developed an easygoing nature with each other, with lots of flirting and even a little bit of innuendo. I was pretty confident she was attracted to me by the way she acted. Light touches with her hands, standing shoulder to shoulder, things like that. And I was certainly attracted to her. One night we stayed late to finish a project. I wasn't feeling much like going home and she lives alone so had nowhere in particular to be. I pulled out a couple of beers and we drank and talked. We were right next to each other on that leather couch in my office. Jesus, David, you've did me on that couch. David just smiled. Okay, I think I've heard enough. Sorry. So, anyway, that was the start. I figured if you could do it, so could I. But I always do it when you're busy. You purposely stayed late to do it. Like I said, Colleen, we're basically roommates at this point. You made a choice, and I made mine. It's not the same thing, David. My time with Ryan didn't intrude on my time with you. You can't say the same thing. True, but the circumstances were different. You went outside the marriage first. All I did was respond. The truth is that you were trying to be considerate since you were the first one doing it. And despite my objection to what you did, I do appreciate that. But frankly, I didn't think I owed you much consideration. Colleen was hurting. She couldn't get the image of her husband and that woman having sex out of her mind. For the first time, she realized how her relationship with Ryan, even with all of the boundaries she had placed on it, could affect David. She had assumed it would be out of sight, out of mind, but it was most definitely not out of mind. After a few minutes, David spoke again. There's something else I need to tell you, Colleen. What's that? She managed to whisper. Alana's pregnant. About two months. Colleen's eyes went wide and she took a sharp intake of breath. As if this wasn't bad enough, it had now gotten even worse. It's it's yours. She assures me it is. I'll be making sure, of course. How did this happen? David took a deep breath. It was intentional. Colleen's mind was reeling from yet another blow. She wasn't sure how much more of this she could take, but she had to know everything. Now was the time to get it all out in the open no matter how much it hurt. You, you, you knocked her up. On purpose? But why? I have a very valuable company, Colleen, that we are the sole owners of. And presently, I have no one to leave it to. I had expected to simply sell the company when the time came, but I've come to dislike that idea. My employees are like family, and I didn't want to leave their fates in the hands of a stranger, or worse, some conglomerate. Now, depending on the timing, I plan to leave it to Alana or to our baby. Are you divorcing me, David? I'm not planning on it, at least not yet. I had planned to keep things as they are. Alana wants to marry me, and even paid to have a prenup written up that is heavily in my favor but she's also okay with things staying as there as long as we get to spend time together. So, the status quo it is. You can keep seeing Ryan and I'll have Alana. This was too much. Maybe she was naive, but Colleen never expected things to turn out this way. She stood up and picked up her purse and her keys. David, I'm going to need some time to process all of this. I'm going to take a drive and I may be very late. I'll keep in touch by text so you won't worry. Colleen left the house and drove aimlessly throughout the city. How had things gone this far? Her husband had a lover of his own? And she was so young and beautiful, with a dark complexion and long, wavy dark brown hair. She assumed Alana was Hispanic but was unsure beyond that. She sent periodic texts to David letting him know that she was still driving, and his response was always the same. Please be safe. 
She took some satisfaction that he still cared about her well-being. She finally arrived home at around 2 a.m. and walked wearily into the house. She found David asleep but her bedside lamp considerately left on so she could see. She went into her closet and changed for bed, finding David awake and sitting up when she emerged. Are you all right, Colleen? Yes, David. I'm fine but I am tired. Let's get some sleep and we'll talk again tomorrow. She climbed into bed and slept. They never got around to talking the next day, mostly because there wasn't much else to say. David went into work and Colleen met with her friends. She thought about canceling her afternoon with Ryan but didn't, and in the end was glad she had gone through with it. He realized immediately that something was wrong, and rather than an afternoon of sex, they spent some time talking and, when they did have sex, it was gentle and slow. The next few weeks passed quickly. With Colleen now aware of his relationship with Alana, David was staying late at the office more often. While she understood, this still hurt Colleen's feelings and she found herself not feeling particularly well, spending several evenings entirely in bed. She'd never had a sensitive stomach before so took this as a sign that the status of her marriage was affecting her deeply. She finally decided to see a doctor. Colleen Conyers Lynch stepped off the elevator on the seventh floor of her husband's office building and headed immediately toward his office. Terry, the receptionist, went to stop her, knowing that her boss and Alana were in there alone and, potentially, in a compromising position. Mrs. Lynch, wait. Colleen turned toward Terry, whom she had always been fond of, and gave her a gentle smile. It's all right, Terry. I already know about them. But thank you so much for your kindness and concern. Terry could just stand and watch as Colleen continued her walk down the hallway that led to her husband's office. She entered without knocking, finding Alana astride her husband's lap as he sat in his chair. The sound of the door drew their attention and both of their hands turned in unison. Alana quickly leapt off his lap and ran into David's private restroom. Colleen, what on earth? What are you doing here? We need to talk, David, said Colleen, as Alana emerged from the restroom. It couldn't have waited until tonight? It could have, but I wanted to do it here since it concerns Alana as well. Shall we sit on the couch? They all took a seat with Colleen on one end and David on the other. Alana rested her shapely behind on the arm rest behind David. Colleen extended her arm, handing David a file folder. What's this? I'm divorcing you. The look on his face was priceless. Were it not for the seriousness of the situation and the pain she was feeling at taking this step, she would have found it amusing. You're divorcing me? Yes, David. I think you'll find the terms agreeable. I've not asked for any part of the company though I added a little extra in the cash settlement to make up for it, but it's nothing you can't afford. David glanced through the terms outlined in the filing and saw nothing objectionable. In fact, it was probably less than the court would have awarded her. The settlement itself, then, wasn't a problem. The only question David had was, why? Or rather, why now? For a couple of reasons, David, but mostly because I love you. You'll have to explain that. I've loved you since the first time I met you at Sheila Mullen's pool party. We were 17 then, and we've been together more than half our lives, almost 26 years. And I want you to be happy. I made a bad choice and damaged us beyond repair, so I'm setting you free to be happy with Alana and your new baby. Colleen smiled at Alana as her face lit up with the news that she'd actually get to marry he man she fell in love with. David was more shocked than anything else. What about you, Colleen? Oh, your generosity will more than take care of me for the rest of my life. I'm embarking on a new period of my life, and I'm a little scared. It's exciting. Lots of women live alone, Colleen. I'm sure you'll be fine. Actually, that's not what I meant. I won't be alone for long. It seems I've gotten myself pregnant. The folder of papers hit the floor with a thud as David looked at his soon-to-be ex-wife in shock. They'd never had kids together, preferring their time together and ability to just head away for a weekend. They had enjoyed living their lives child-free. But now, as their marriage was coming to an end, they were separately embarking on a totally new adventure, parenthood. It's Ryan's. Even as he said it, David realized what he had implied. Since he hadn't had sex with his wife in months, it had to be Ryan's unless Colleen had another lover. He had no desire to hurt or insult her, and was happy when she took the question in stride. Just what kind of woman do you think I am? Colleen said, though in a light-hearted tone and a bit of a chuckle. Oh, I guess we know the answer to that. Don't we? Yes, it's Ryan's. Are you two going to make a go of it? Ryan is and always will be a bachelor. We would never work out, and I don't love him anyway. To his credit, he made no effort to deny it and has been very agreeable in terms of child support. 
I won't need the money, of course, but it's the principle. He's even said he plans to make the effort to be a good father, though he has doubts about his ability. You're keeping the baby? Your generosity will allow me the freedom to raise my baby. Plus, I plan to have a full-time live-in nanny, which you will be indirectly paying for. To that end, you probably noticed that I wanted to keep the house. I did, which rather surprised me, but I wasn't going to argue. You know how much I love that house, and I want to raise my baby there. I think it'll be a good size for us and the nanny. I think you're right. I must say, Colleen, I really never expected this, but it makes sense. Do your friends know? Oh, yes. We had a come-to-Jesus conversation about their nonsense and lies. They felt bad that they had led me down that path, but I assured them it was my own choice. They finally admitted the truth, but I'm still the only one going for a divorce, so I guess that's a point in my favor. You know if you ever need anything you can call me. I know, but it's time I stood on my own two feet. I went from dad's house to college to your house. I promise I'll call if I have to, but I plan to do it myself. With that, Colleen stood up with David and Alana doing the same. Colleen hugged them both, then turned and walked back out the way she came. Dear listeners, please share your thoughts in the comments section below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.